What's going on here? A man in a woman's blouse? A dodgy attempt at dancing? Is that the new image of men? Something has gone completely wrong. What exactly? We'll explain in 15 Myths in 15 Minutes all about men. Let's jump back to the start. Roman met up with his friend Theo at a snack bar. He's starving, but for some reason he can't really concentrate on ordering. The blonde girl and her cleavage keep him distracted. Sarah notices him staring. She and her friend Teresa have an idea. Hey, come here. I'll order you a burrito. Maybe you'll stop staring at my cleavage the whole time once you're full. Will Sarah's plan work? Supposedly, there's a connection between hungry men and breasts. Especially big breasts, as studies from the UK show. Between 6 and 7 p.m., hungry and full men were shown the same pictures of women. Some weren't particularly busty, but others indeed were. The result? Hungry men found women with big breasts significantly more attractive. Why this is, is still unknown. That was quite a first impression. But Roman isn't intimidated. The two guys sit down with Sarah and her friend Teresa. Roman buys the first round. I think I'll have a cup of tea. What do you mean, tea? What's up with you? I'm sick. My sisters are getting on my nerves. I got into a fight with them. Of course, women are to blame once again. Who else? It's a well-known fact that women make men sick. Well, really, they make them ill. Not all women, of course, but the more beautiful ones for sure. In one study from the University of Valencia, men were paired together with another man or an attractive woman to solve a Sudoku puzzle. Their cortisol level was measured. If the men were among themselves, nothing changed. In the presence of the beautiful lady, the researchers found that after five minutes, the cortisol output increased as a response to stress. Cortisol inhibits the immune system and harms the heart in the long term. After they've finished eating, the four move on elsewhere. Sarah wants to get to know Roman better, but he's not exactly the talkative type. Theo, on the other hand, barely catches his breath until Roman signals him to shut up and listen. Roman's theory is... Women love men who are good listeners. But that's not necessarily true, at least not on the first date. In an experiment conducted by Israeli and US researchers, women judged the attractiveness of men that had previously shared personal experiences during conversation earlier. Keen listeners were considered less sexy and less masculine. And the four come across a chance to be true men, a trickster. Naturally, the boys know that the con man works with tricks up his sleeve, but they don't care. They gladly bet their money to the baffled looks of the women. No risk, no fun. No risk, no fun. Trust me, it's fine. Just look, look. It's clear. Men equal risk takers, right? Usually, that's the case. But that's only true to one tenth of particularly risk prone men. If you leave them out, there's no real difference. Incidentally, men become especially bold when they're touched by a woman. This applies to both games and investment strategies. Conversely, women can't be influenced. No. All four of them got more drinks and kept going on their way. To put the boys to the test, Sarah has an idea. Would you be up for a round truth or dare? A major teenage flashback. The rules are clear. Either you can answer a question honestly or perform a task. The first round goes directly to Sarah. Truth. Obviously. What a joke. <laughs> women and truth. Everyone knows that women lie more often than men. Not true. A British study has now brought this truth to light. 
Men lie on average 1,092 times per year, while women only lie 728 times, and they do so for different reasons. The most common lie in men, I didn't drink that much. Women lie when it comes to their emotional life, like with the classic line, Everything's fine, honey. The happy foursome is suddenly interrupted as a keen little jogger runs down step by step and pushes into Roman. Another thing that's typical. That's crazy. Short men always have to prove themselves somehow. Is she right? Does height influence ambition? At least, the rumour has it that they suffer from a Napoleon complex. The myth that little men are over-ambitious is wrong. A British study found no direct link between male height and personality traits. And, by the way, Napoleon wasn't that short at all. The image of the power-hungry mini-emperor is based on a conversion error from old measuring units into feet and inches. Napoleon was 1 meter 68, taller than the average man of his age. Sarah meets an old acquaintance who's in an advanced stage of pregnancy. The girlfriends are remarkably interested. <laughs> ah, typical look at the girls, tick-tock. Well, the biological clock just keeps on ticking with women, right? False. Studies conducted in the USA and Israel show that the health risk for the newborn also increases with the age of the father. But being younger isn't automatically better. Even with teenage fathers, the probability that children later on develop, for example, schizophrenia, increases. The optimal age to become a father is between 21 and 35 years old. Sarah and Roman seem to have hit it off. Theo and Teresa noticed that. They'd rather leave the two alone. The lovebirds play another round of truth or dare. Again, it's Roman's turn. Oh, great. I choose truth this time. Are you a women connoisseur? Yeah, obviously. Roman understands women so well, he's convinced he can tell when a woman is ovulating from the tone of a woman's voice. I was just out on a stroll. Ah, is it possible that you just happen to be ovulating? Excuse me? But is it true? Can men tell a woman is ovulating because of her voice? Biologically, it makes sense. Men find women's voices more attractive during their fertile days. But it's false. German researchers have tried playing women's voice recordings to men on different stages of their fertility cycle. But there was no real difference for the men. Only one thing was clear. The female voice is raspier during menstruation. That's why some big opera singers are allowed to take a break once every now and then. OK, Roman can't recognize fertile female voices, but he does pick up when he's in trouble. If you ever talk to my girl again, I'll ovulate you too. What do you mean, ovulate? At least I've got balls. This perfectly timed intervention leads us to the next myth. Are men aggressive by nature? Yes and no. US researchers measured the aggressiveness of gamers in an experiment. Men were more aggressive than women. Women only played as aggressively as men when they were allowed to remain anonymous. Scientists suspect that the potential for aggression of women and men is the same. But in women, it's triggered by open displays of aggression. No. Sarah was pretty embarrassed by Roman's macho attitude. She's not really into that. But she already knows how to calm him down again. That should help. Roman resembles a drenched poodle. Wouldn't you do anything to make women happy? Hopefully this shower won't end badly. After all, men get sick easily. Unfortunately, true. Men are by nature the most delicate beings. For instance, male fetuses are more susceptible to miscarriages than female ones. On top of that, testosterone weakens the immune system and makes men more susceptible to infections throughout their entire lives. In fact, Roman is freezing and isn't feeling well. Luckily, Sarah lives close by. First up, warming up. 
Sarah wants to pick fresh clothes for him. Roman sees his chance and inspects the playground. No, forget about it. You're not sleeping here. It's better that way if she wants to sleep in peace. After all, men disturb women's sleep. It's true! Researchers at the University of Vienna found out sleeping with no man in bed, women have fewer waking phases and feel more rested the next day. For men, it's the other way round. Their sleep is more restful when they lie next to their partner. This may explain why only 20% of men suffer from sleep disorders, but 65% of women do. Sarah hands one of her tops to Roman. She's chosen one of her best. Skin tight, lemon yellow, and with a fairy design. It suits Roman just fine. Sarah is satisfied with her selection. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I like men with a bit of a feminine touch. Well, that probably has to do with the fact that the taste in men depends on the cycle of the woman. Or is that completely wrong? The myth lives on, since even scientists believe that women are more into manlier men during their fertile days than during their infertile days. Californian researchers summarized 60 studies and reached a conclusion. It's not true. Their taste in men has nothing to do with the female cycle. Sarah likes feminine men. She can have them. And now he tries to put on her shoes. Should I wear these too? No, no, give me that. That's my best weapon. Absolutely right. High heels don't only attract men more, they also make them more helpful, right? Sounds simple enough, but it's true. In an experiment done by French researchers, a female decoy asked men for a favour in a pedestrian precinct. She wore different sized heels. The result was quite clear. With high heels, the proportion of helpful men doubled in comparison to flat shoes. And even Roman shows the effect high heels have. The two are getting closer. But Roman totally misses the target. I love you. What's he all about? Sarah always thought that men were reluctant to say these three words. But that's not true. A survey from a large dating agency shows 22% of men pour out an I love you after only seven days, whereas in women, only 7% are that quick to do so. Mm. Just as many men, 7%, even say it on the first night out. The three magic words threw Sarah off her game. A distraction would be the best option right now. Yet another round of truth or dare. Again, it's Roman's turn. Dare. I know. You'll dance for me. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Roman isn't so confident. He can dance like a man, but not in these women's clothes. But Sarah knows why she wants him to dance. After all, the way you dance reveals your testosterone level. That's right! A British scientist observed men dancing and later measured their testosterone levels. The result? Men with a lot of testosterone make bigger projecting movements and vary them more frequently. Women also find this particularly attractive. Men with less testosterone, on the other hand, make more discreet movements. After a few bars, Roman gets in the groove. This is a sign for Sarah. That's a true man, despite the women's clothing. <laughs>